Good evening, everyone. I welcome you all on behalf of Team ISMS ICS to this wonderful evening. First of all, happy Oli to all of you. I feel proud to say that ISMS ICS has grown to include 24 state chapters in India and 17 international chapters, including USA and Singapore, to name a few. And today we are here to install the 18th international chapter, that is Nepal chapter of ISMS ICS. We are grateful to Dr. Minu Chaudhary and Dr. Ranjit and Team Nepal for taking this initiative. And special mention, uh, thank you, Satanju sir, for making this happen today. We uh, have with this, uh, us Dr. Amulya Sahu sir, who is founder chairman of ISMS ICS. I would like to request Dr. Sahu to share a few words of wisdom. Over to you, Sahu sir. Yeah, wish you all a very happy holy. And uh, Nepal is so dear and close to us, but it took a lot of time to get them into the ISMS family. But uh, it is a, though it is late, but it is a very good inclusion to our family. And I thank Satansu, who I have been pestering for uh, almost three years to get this chapter and he has finally got it and Minu also name has been floating for a long time but she ultimately she got them around and uh, thank you so much and we feel happy as you all know that uh, ISMS is a big organization it is almost going in the direction of ICO and we are uh, going to have the similar kind of uh, thing in the near future so welcome to ISMS ICS thank you thank you so much sir uh, we have with us Dr. Jagannath Boramani, sir, who is executive chairman uh, of the organization. Uh, Dr. Boramani will uh, take us through the journey of ISMS ICS. Over to you, Boramani, yeah. sir. Good evening, all of you. Can you hear me? Yes, sir, you are audible. Yeah, yeah. I welcome all the Nepal executive and wish the Nepal chapter of ISMS ICS all the best. Uh, let me show you a small video about the journey of ISM SICS. Uh, I'm sharing my screen. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, uh, sir. If, yes. If the commentary is not audible, let me know. I'll start the video. Welcome to International Society of Manual Small Incision Cataract Surgeons. Pleural tunnel incision is a secure incision. There are newer advancements in SICS like 2 mm incision surgery, smart incision surgery. With customization of incisions, the astigmatism can be managed very well. SICS has become a premier surgery now. The International Society of Manual Small Incision Cataract Surgery was launched in 2005 in Mumbai. Dr. Amulya Sahu is the founder chairman of the organization and Dr. Jagannath Boramani is the executive chairman of the organization. The first international conference of ISMSICS was organized in 2005 in Beijing, China. The second international conference was held in Malaysia in 2007. This was a three days event with wet lab, live surgeries and scientific deliberations. This was followed by successful conferences in Indonesia, Sweden, Egypt, Philippines, and South Africa. ISMS ICS surgeons were invited to conduct wet lab in Asia Pacific Association of Cataract and Refractive Surgeons Conference in Kuala Lumpur in 2015. Dr. Boramani as the first editor, published many journals of the organization in the past. The organization started holding World Conference every two years. The first Comprehensive Cataract Conference, CCC 2015 was held in Pune. The Aravind Eye Care System Organized the second CCC in 2017, in Chennai. This conference witnessed the joining of, Help Me See, 
with ISMSICS for simulator-based training. An instruction course as well as wet lab were conducted in WOC 2018 in Barcelona. The ebook Master's Guideline on SICS was released during this conference. The organization has arranged multiple programs in partnership with various associations. The World Conference CCC 2019 was a three days grand scientific fiesta in Kolkata. The All India Ophthalmological Society started giving ISMSICS two big sessions in every annual conference since 2018. WOC 2020 also gave a session to SICS surgeons. ISMSICS has now chapters in almost all states of India and across many countries in the world. We have started training on SICS simulator in partnership with Help Me See. The internet-based global SICS training program was launched during AIOC 2022. ISMSICS started the publication of journal again in 2022. After the physical launching in Egypt and Bangladesh, during the pandemic chapters were launched in almost 15 countries. The COVID pandemic witnessed almost 50 webinars with massive attendance. ISMSICS has got a women's wing to address specific issues of women surgeons. The Emeritus Society of Ophthalmology organized a two days hands-on training workshop in Dubai in June 2022. The Australia and New Zealand chapter was launched during the annual conference of the Royal Australia and New Zealand College of Ophthalmologists in October 2022. The fourth CCC was organized by PGIMER Chandigarh in November 2022. In June 2023, ISMSICS conducted workshops and sessions in Emeritus Society of Ophthalmology Conference at Abu Dhabi. The UAE chapter also was launched. The fifth CCC will be held in Hyderabad in 2023. So thank you and over to Dr. Arti. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, moving on, we have with us Dr. Parikshit Kokte, sir, who is Vice Chairman of the organization. Sir, we would like to hear from you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Arti. It's a great pleasure to have all the Nepal stalwarts join ISMS ICS. That way, like India, Nepal is also perhaps the host or we can say the mother of SICS starting from Dr. Alvarez Henning, Dr. Sandhu Pruitt, and the eight large eye hospitals in Nepal, each one of which does more than 30 to 60,000 surgeries a year are awesome. I mean, we have only Chitrakoot and Arvind of that size in India, but there are so many in Nepal. And I'm so happy that the team uh, led by ma'am and Dr. Purushottam Doshi, Dr. Minu and Dr. Purushottam sir have got all of them together and we look forward with you to popularize ISMS ICS and with that SICS and cataract surgery as a whole all over the world. In Nepal, you already get students from most parts of Asia. I think with the Nepal in the ISMS ICS 10, the Nepal ISMS ICS chapter will do really great. We really look forward to working from you and learning from you. In my last four or five visits that I have had as an evaluator in this country, every time I have gone, I have learned something new from Nepal of Karmology. So thank you for joining our fold. I'm sure you will help us grow in greater strength and together we will do so much more. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, next, we have Dr. Satanshu Mathur, sir. Uh, who is Chief National Coordinator of ISMS ICS. Sir, we would like to hear from you. Sir, kindly unmute yourself. Hey, you are muted, Satanshu, sir. Thank you, Aarti. First of all, I would like to congratulate 
Dr. Minu and his entire team for this selection of this ICMSCSTS Nepal chapter. Dr. Minu, the ICMSCSTS has taken a long step now. Now we are, it is not the fear to fake or What you have, we have been discussing, you always telling me Nepal, the FACO surgery is uh, giving the priority than SICS surgery. The situation was the same in India a few years back, but now we are at par with the FACO surgery and any surgery. And today, after the CME, all of you will come to understand that why SICS surgery is now at par with the FACO surgery. Where we have customized the season, we have take, able to remove the nucleus through 3mm season with neutral FACO, neutral astigmatism. So, Dr. Minu, we hope under your guidance and leadership, you are the president of Nepal of Samuel Society also. We will can have a good SICF session in next conference in Nepal, where we can have faculty from India and from Nepal to demonstrate the advancement in SICF surgery. So congratulations to all of you. And now, Dr. Arti, special thanks to you for coordinating for the last 15 days, day and night. Thank you, Arti. Dr. Arti is great in that. Yes. Yeah, you see it because thank you now. so much. No need to say thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah. So next we have with us Dr. Deepak Mishra, sir, who is Secretary of ISMS ICS. Thank you, Arti. First of all, I would like to welcome all the dignitaries of Nepal on this our ISM ICS family. Last year during my Nepal visit, we had a lot of discussion with Minu ma'am. And Sahu sir given me this task that you, while you are in Nepal, plan the chapter. But somehow it was, uh, it didn't happen at that time. I'm thankful to Satansu sir, Minu ma'am, and Dr. Ranjit and Dr. Joshi, along with Dr. Arti, that efforts of all of them, we are now in this, at this stage that we have a long-term friendship and partnership with Nepal Ophthalmic Society and our New chapter is being launched. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. So let's move on further. Uh, so I'll be moderating this session along with Dr. Purushottam Joshi, sir, from Nepal. So without further delay, let's move on to the installation ceremony. So these are the uh, office bearers from Nepal. First, we have with us uh, as chairman, dynamic professor, uh, Dr. Meenu Chaudhary, ma'am. Uh, I would like to, uh, yeah. I would request Dr. Sahu, sir, to please yeah, install Meenu as chairman. Yeah. 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 Yes, Professor Minu, and uh, I've been hearing about you for a long time. So welcome to uh, ISF, ISMSI chapter Nepal. To uh, Let us have a very collaborative and uh, uh, fulfilling journey. So welcome. Minu ma'am, would you like to comment something? Uh, Hello. Yeah. Thank you so much. I think I'm really thankful to Dr. Satanshu. I think that is from where our journey started. I think we met in the Konya conference in Iskiris, and it has been long time that he has been telling and we wanted it to happen, but I don't know what was happening. So I'm really thankful to Dr. Satanshu, Dr. Parikshit, Dr. Sahu, and Dr. Boramani for all this happening and all the Nepal chapter, our executive team, Dr. Uh, Purushottam and Dr. Ranjit and all others who have really taken this initiative. And I think even Dr. Deepak, we've been meeting and we have been talking, but I'm really thankful. And we all know that we've been doing FACO, but AS, SICS is something which all of us should know. That is something is going to really help us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am. So next we have with us Dr. Srijana Adhikari, ma'am, as Vice Chairman of ISMS ICS Nepal Chapter. I would request Dr. Boramani, sir, to please install, ma'am. Welcome, Dr. Srijana, as Vice Chairman of Nepal Chapter of ISMS ICS. And I announce that she is the Vice Chairman. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. 
So uh, next, I would request Dr. Parikshit Gokte sir to please install Dr. Pushottam Joshi sir as president of Nepal chapter of ISMSICS. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Parikshit sir is occupied. Uh, yeah, thank you, sir. Maybe you can do that. Yeah. So we welcome Dr. Pushottam sir in the SMS family, and we know your uh, presidentship. We will have some fruitful discussions on SICS in future. Welcome, you, sir. Mr. Anmol, can you please mute others so that we uh, don't have any disturbances? Thank you. Dr. Pushyaswan, sir, you want to say something? Okay, Arti. Yes. Go ahead. Thank you very much. We'll work together. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, uh, next, I would request Dr. Deepak Mishra, sir, to please install Dr. Suresh Raj Pansar as Vice President of IMSICS uh, Nepal Chapter. Deepak Mishra, sir. Thank you, Dr. Arti. Now I install Dr. Suresh sir as a Vice President of IFMRC Nepal chapter and wish that under his leadership we have more collaboration with each other. Thank you. Dr. Suresh, would you like to say something? So moving on next, we have with us Dr. Raksha Pant, ma'am, as General Secretary of Nepal chapter of ISMS ICS, I would request Dr. Nita Dorwad, ma'am, to please install Dr. Pant as General Secretary. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Uh, <laughs> welcome, Dr. Raksha Pant as a General Secretary. We, have, we look forward for your good contribution to this platform. So next we have with us Dr. Gainendra, sir, as Joint Secretary. I would request Dr. Nilutparna to please install uh, Dr. Gyanendra as Joint Secretary. Congratulations, Dr. Gyanendra. <laughs> Best wishes for your uh, new venture. Uh, we hope to collaborate with you in the new future, near future. Thank you so much. <clears throat> we have with us Dr. Madhu Thapa, ma'am, as Treasurer of Nepal chapter of ISMS ICS would request Dr. Deepak Mishra sir to please install Dr. Madhu. <laughs> Dr. Satanchu sir, can you please do the honors? Okay, okay, Dr. Neeta, ma'am, if you are around, you can do that. Yeah, yeah. Welcome, Dr. Madhu Thapa. Welcome as a treasurer. We look forward for your contribution on this ISMS ICS platform. Would re request Dr. Nilut Parna to please install Dr. Prabha Subhudi, ma'am, as a joint treasurer of Nepal chapter. Congratulations, Dr. Prabha. Welcome to ISMS. <laughs> So moving on, I would request Dr. Sahu sir to please install uh, the executive members of Nepal chapter, Dr. Sulakshmi, Dr. Kabidra, Dr. Gobind, Dr. Hari, Dr. Vibhuti, Dr. Amit Kumar Yadav, and Dr. Pavan Mahat sir. Uh, I, Dr. Sahu. I, I welcome you all to the family of ISMS ICS. Thank you. We'll request Dr. Boramani, sir, to please install the scientific members, Dr. Thapa, Dr. Sanyam, Dr. Sanjay Kumar Singh, Dr. Sanjita, Dr. Syam Vyas, Dr. Ranjit Kumar Sa, Dr. Kaushal, Dr. Indira, and Dr. Andi. Please install them, Boramani, sir. Yeah, I welcome all of you to the scientific committee of Nepal chapter of ISM SICS. And we expect a lot of interaction with you all and expect a lot of contribution to, a, uh, to take the SICS movement forward across the globe. Thank you. So moving on to the last session, uh, we have with us Dr. Uh, Dr. Ruet, Dr. Rita, Dr. Govinda, Dr. Pradhan, Dr. Prerna, Dr. Harish, Dr. Pushpagiri, Dr. Simanta, Dr. Salma, 
डॉक्टर हेमचंद्र झा डॉक्टर लीला एंड डॉक्टर देव एज एडवाइजर्स ऑफ नेपाल चैप्टर ऑफ आई एस एम एस आई सी एस डॉक्टर बुरामी सर कैन यू प्लीज इंस्टॉल दैम yeah i announce that all these are our advisors and they will be acting as a guiding force to the nepal chapter of ism sics thank you so uh, congratulations and welcome to the family of ism sics uh, i would like to request i would request dr purushottam sir to take over the session from here yeah thank you dr arthi now we are going for the presentation section academic section the first presenter is dr gyanendra lamichane and his topic is the importance and rationale of msics in nepalis nepalis context and dr gyanendra is uh, uh, has completed his M md of thermology from bpklcos in 2009 and completed his fellowship from med on medical retina and uvit is from lumini i institute nepal and gunma university japan he has done more than 40000 mscs till now he is currently working as a high volume surgeon cataract surgeon and constantly involved in teaching mscs to residents and ophthalmologists at his institute lumini i institute he is the chief medical director he is a life member of Nepal Ophthalmic Society and AIOS. The floor is over to Dr. Gyanendra for his presentation. Thank you, Dr. Pushpam. Uh, let me share my slide. Uh, are my slides visible and am I yes, audible? Sir. Yes, sir. We are good to go. Visible, sir. Uh, let me know if it's my slides are not moving okay uh, so good evening, uh, good evening everybody and uh, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity and involving me as a family of a uh, ism sics so i am talking briefly about the importance and the rationale of uh, manual sics in nepal's context so uh, first of all i like to uh, share one uh, i think uh, dr boramani sir and uh, sahu sir has uh, forgotten or not we have met in uh, brisbane uh, during uh, ransco conference and we have uh, have sort discussion about this nepal chapter as well and i am very ha happy that today we can uh, finalize these things so let's begin with a uh, daily routine of uh, high volume cataract surgeon we get long list of patients awaited and most of them are from different uh, grades of cataract some may be grade 1 or grade 2 and next day after doing then uh, uneventful surgery the, uh, when we open the uh, bandage the patient see both so clearly and this is what we all feel the patient is happy and doctor is also happy so while uh, making the presentation i went through the uh, various uh, google search to find out uh, the different uh, aspects uh, of feco and Uh, manual SICS. I can see lots of uh, literature uh, mentioning that FACO is better than MSICS. But at the same time, there is a quite a wonderful number and uh, beautiful articles which is telling that manual SICS is not inferior to FACO and it's comparable to FACO. So before taking to the main presentation, this is a one simple question: If we want to purchase a, a smartphone. why which we like to prefer whether we prefer iphone or android obviously if i ask you question everybody's answer will be iphone but we have to always think lots uh, feel lots of things in mind because the choice of your phone depend upon different factor whether you have adequate amount of money or not whether you uh, get your available phone locally or not that's it is a multifactorial and the same thing applies in case of cataract surgery we have option of feco we have options of uh, manual sics and uh, which one is better it is always multifactorial so most of the time when we put the question in a forum that why feco is better than uh, you know sics most of the people tell that we have very less astigmatism in feco but is it really the surgically induced astigmatism that the issue we are hesitating to adopt msics if that is the answer if that is the answer then we can clearly tell that i like to 
quote the slide of our respected Jagannath Bora Minister, he has clearly mentioned that if we customize the type of incision and type of uh, you know, length of the incision, we can reduce the astigmatism to a great extent. Similar happens in both temporal and SICS and uh, superior incision SICS. And similarly, there are lots of advantages in MSICS which we help to tackle the condition when we feel difficulty in case of FACO. For example, manual SICS cause less trauma to endothelium, so it is equally effective for all grade of cataract. Similarly, in manual SICS, we don't need a perfect size of rexis always, whereas in face of FACO, they, we always need a perfect size rexis. And it's very difficult to perform and very risky maneuver to perform, uh, perform chop or FACO surgery in case of weak zonules, whereas it is provides very less stress in zonule in case of MSICS. If we see the trend uh, in developed country, we uh, find that FACO is done more in number in compared to SICS, but in developing country like in Nepal and low resource uh, country, still MSICS is done quite a high number in compared to FACO with a go with good result. Again, I'm stressing the same point, the choice of surgery is always multifactorial. <clears throat> I like to share uh, our da hospital data uh, of last year. We examined total 5,47,000 patients and we performed about 44,000 surgery. And out of this, almost 80% of our cases were manual SICS and only 20% of FACO. From this data, you can realize how the importance of SICS in Nepalese context as well. I take this opportunity to highlight the various eye care provider in Nepal. Still in Nepal, the NGO based eye hospitals covers the maximum part of the eye care provider followed by Tilganga Institute of Ophthalmology. Nowadays, we have quite a wonderful number of private eye hospitals and clinic providing services uh, and various medical colleges, eye department. And uh, unfortunately, the government of Nepal has very less investment in eye care services in its emerging phase. And uh, I just like to uh, highlight one slide about the how we are providing eye care services in Nepal. We have basically five categories of service provider uh, through eye care center, what we call as vision center in India, uh, which do not provide any sort of cataract surgery. And the cataract surgery will be uh, provided from surgical center onwards. And you can see in this uh, chart, uh, in surgical center and secondary hospitals, where uh, most of the cases are manual SICS, Whereas tertiary center, they provided mixed type of SICS as well as FACO. So what the relevance of MSICS in Nepal, if you see, though the cataract surgery has gone and advanced from the stage of uh, couching to femto, manual SICS has still a great role. If we quote the RAB survey data, which has recently uh, completed, started from 2019, which clearly shows that majority of we have great backlog of cataract, especially in poor community, who are still waiting for camps and non-affordable for FACO. And they, the RAP survey has clearly mentioned that the leading cause of blindness in Nepal is still the cataract. And surprisingly, the major cause for barrier of cataract surgery is on affordability. So manual SICS has a great rationale in Nepal for now. Similarly, post-operative visual acuity is almost comparable to FACO if it is done by the experienced surgeon. And it is suitable technique for almost all grade of cataract with good post-operative outcome. And we don't have sufficient number of ophthalmologists in Nepal. Uh, we hardly have 450 to 500 ophthalmologists entire country and not 100% of them are FACO surgeon. And similarly, we have very limited number of FACO training centers in country. So still there is a relevance of MSICS in Nepal. And it is faster and extremely suitable for high volume center especially camps and secondary hospital. So this is the one uh, camp which I recently completed 300 surgery in uh, two and a half days. We hardly take three to five minutes to complete a cataract surgery by manual SICS. So it's very suitable in high volume center as well. Similarly, less investment is required because we don't need any sophisticated machine. What we all need is a good quality microscope. And this is uh, our OT setup for high volume uh, setting. You can see a single day, it's a, uh, it's a surgical record of 20th February, where we operated total 209 SICS and 60 FACO. So this is the high volume our OT setup. You can see the four surgeon operating at the same time in the uh, eight, total eight table. 
so the all well that ends well MICS stand perfect for all surgeon and all grade of cataract so you can see after even a major senile cataract it's a, if you do perfectly it's a crystal clear cornea good visual recovery and minimal congested eye so here is a small video which uh, I have done I uh, like to share with you it's just a three minute uh, video please let me know if it is not playing So this is the first post of uh, vision was 6 uh, 12 unedited crystal clear cornea, clear cornea and non consisted eye so this is the happy patient it was a one eyed patient you can see in this picture and uh, with even with this uh, manual sics you can get loss of priceless happiness you can see in this all this picture and sometimes patient express their happiness so wonderfully fully Wonderful. I think. 
So uh, this is precious. a few points I want to tell here. Okay, sir. Sir, you you people are doing a wonderful job there. High volume surgery. That is a immediate, and the, for the future, I think you should. Uh, we have a research wing, and you select few people who will be focusing on research, mm -hmm. because we have to see the next generation. Keep in next generation in mind and uh, contribute something, which is uh, really uh, they can take it forward. So uh, it's a wonderful surgery, and uh, we should not tell it is poor man's surgery. Yeah. In India, we are marketing it. There are premium surgeries. And people are charging more than FECO here. Mm. So uh, that we should not, uh, because then what happens? Now your stature goes down, then you go to FECO to improve your stature. Mm. And then that should stop. You are a good surgeon or you are a bad surgeon. You should not be FECO surgeon or SIC surgeon. Mm. So we must bring the surgeon factor into the center and tell that you are coming to me, whether I do it with my hand or with my magic, that is none of your business. You want a good eyesight. I assure you of that. I charge my fees. That's all. So I think we have to come out of this uh, charity mentality. We do charity for enjoyment, but we should not be charitable uh, as a surgeon. Surgeon factor becomes diluted. And yeah. most America, America and other places, they want to learn because they know that it is not cost effective to continue with sticking to FECO. Exactly. Exactly. So let us have a lot of research because your volume is too much. Uh, okay, sir. Thank you so much. And uh, my last two slides, uh, my recommendation for uh, uh, is that we should always have anterior, uh, especially in peripheral center, anterior vitrectomy machine in backup because a good vitrectomy will save the patients from going retinal detachment. At the same time, we have a good uh, outcome with ACIOL as well. And we should have good coordination with the base hospital. And the uh, so these are the same thing. So the take home message is uh, MSICS is equally comparable and non inferior to the FECO. And the same thing the SAR has just recently uh, just now realized that we should uh, improve our MSICS counseling in better way that we can do what we are doing currently. That is not a charitable thing and it's not a poor man's surgery as well. So M uh, M MSICS is our art where FECO is a machine dependent. So let's preserve our art and don't lose it. Thank you very much and wish you all a happy holy. Thank you, Dr. Ganendra, for a wonderful presentation on the relevance of SICS in Nepalese context. Now the next speaker is Dr. Nita Dodwar. She'll be speaking on Dr. Boromoni's customized incision cataract surgery. Dr. Nita Dodwar yeah. did MBBS and MS gold medalist from Rajiv Gandhi Health Science Bangalore. She is presently working as a medical director at Brahma Netralaya and Guru Neet Welfare Foundation, Mumbai. She heads the I program at Prasad Chikitsa Ganeshpuri, medical advisor of Ro Rotary Club of Mo Mumbai, Kadbili, done fellowship from Lions Nov Hospital, Miraj, and short term medical retina fellowship from Arvind Eye Hospital, Madurai. Dr. Nita Dadwar. Yes. Thank you, sir. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for kind introduction. I'll be sharing my slides now. Uh, are my slides are visible now? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, thank you. So I would like to thank our ISM SIC Society, especially Dr. Sahu sir, Boramani sir, for this wonderful opportunity. And would like to congratulate whole Nepal ISM SIC chapter for this uh, wonderful participation. And really, we look forward to work together, collaborate together for further research and other activities. So today I'll be talking on Dr. Boramani's customized incision cataract surgery. As we know in recent times, the cataract surgery has become more of a refractive surgery. Patient needs a perfect visual outcome next day without any glasses. As we have seen, Dr. Ganendra was talking about the comparison of FACO and the SICS, the main was the SIM. Here I'll be starting my presentation with two interesting cases. We see a slide here with the pre-operative uh, uh, 
corneal topography with a minimal astigmatism of 0.13. The patient underwent a SICA surgery and we see a postoperative astigmatism of just 0.17. Here is another example of two diapers, steep meridian at 96. Patient underwent SICA surgery and the astigmatism postoperatively was 0.43 on a topographer and the atorate showed minimal that is 0.25. Patient enjoyed the region of 69 and N6 postoperatively. So the astigmatism, yes, definitely can be managed by a modulation on scleral incision. The scleral incision are usually kind in nature. They heal well, secure well, and important. They give us economical surgery, economical to the patient, and the surgeon can charge with skin charges. The present literature states the advantage of FACO over SICS that it induces less astigmatism. As there is no data available about the modulation of a scleral incision and its impact on astigmatism. The principle is very simple here. If your incision is large and near to the limbus, which induces the higher magnitude of astigmatism. As your incision becomes more, and more curved, the magnitude of astigmatism becomes less as only the central part of your incision takes part in the astigmatism and the peripheral incision is away from the optical axis. This is the algorithm derived from Dr. Boramani's study. The superior straight incision of 7mm gives us 1.70 diopter of astigmatism. As further reduction in the size of incision reduces the magnitude of astigmatism further. The superior curved incision are known to induce less astigmatism. As your incision becomes more and more curved, the magnitude of, magnitude of astigmatism becomes less. The perfect U-shaped center as is shown in the middle figure gives literally no surgically induced astigmatism. Temporal incisions are usually astigmatically neutral. They do not induce or stabilize the astigmatism. The straight 7 mm incision induces just one diopter and for the reduction in the size reduces the astigmatism effect also. Temporal curved incision are again astigmatically neutral induces minimal amount of astigmatism. So this is the chart showing the type of your incision and induced surgical astigmatism. In that, the superior temporal frown induces the minimal astigmatism as compared to superior temporal straight or superior nasal frown incision. This is a very important slide. The trick factor here is you have to center your incision on the steep meridian. So whatever may be the size or the shape of the incision. So the vector forces acts on both the side of the incision and helps to neutralize the astigmatism. This is the figure showing the surgically accessible area to work on the steep meridian. We need to calculate our own SIA to modulate the scleral incision. There are different calculators available on the internet. Put one type of incision in one column and find out your own SIA. I'll go through a few more examples of astigmatism of a different magnitude and axis and how this modulation on the scleral wound helps us to manage the astigmatism. Here we see a preoperative astigmatism of 0.28 at 100 uh, degrees, the superior curved incision has reduced the astigmatism to just 0.18. Another example of 0.39 diopter preoperatively, the incision on a steep meridian has reduced the astigmatism to just 0.22 diopter. This is an interesting example of a little higher astigmatism of 1.12 diopter, the steep meridian being at 97. The incision taken on the steep meridian has further brought down the astigmatism to just 0.15 diopter. 
This is the astigmatism of 1.24 diopter, the steep meridian band at 3. The temporal straight incision has reduced the astigmatism to just 0.34 diopter. This is again an interesting case of a higher astigmatism of 3.30, the steep meridian being at 97. The axis taken, the 7.5 mm incision on the steep meridian has further brought down the in astigmatism by 2.98 and residual astigmatism being just 0.64 day after. So this is another example of 1.97 at 170. The superior, straight superior nasal incision in this side is further reduced the astigmatism to 0.15 day after. So there are so many examples how this scleral modulation has helped to manage the astigmatism. We'll see the practical how this first we are marking the reference point when patient is in a sitting position with the bubble marker at 0 and 180 degrees. And in a line down position, we do a steep axis marking with the uh, gauze make a uh, gauze uh, degree gauze and the axis marker on the right side the 30 degree meridian is marked and the straight incision is centered on the steep meridian and on the left side the 70 degree meridian is marked and the curved incision is centered on the steep meridian to get the maximum benefit for the astigmatism so this article on the customized incision cataract surgery is recently published in the very famous Indian Journal of Ophthalmology. So with this promising result on astigmatism, the perfect terminology should be surgically corrected astigmatism instead of surgically induced astigmatism. And here the incision is no more small but it is customized in each and every case depending on the pre-existing astigmatism. So here the terminology should be customized incision cataract surgery instead of a small incision cataract surgery. With this wonderful scleral tunnel engineering, yes, it is possible to wipe out or at least reduce the stigma of astigmatism. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Neeta, for the excellent presentation on the astigmatism control by SICS. Now, the next presenter is Dr. Ranjit Kumar Sa. His topic of presentation is efficacy of small incision cataract surgery in the community-based eye camps. Dr. Ranjit Kumar Sa is an accomplished ophthalmologist with specialization in glaucoma and currently cataracts and correct cataract surgery. He currently leads the glaucoma department at Bharatpur Eye Hospital and one of the senior FECO and SICS surgeons with more than eight years of experience. He has performed more than 30,000 cataract surgeries and has gained immense expertise in the field of eye health care. Dr. Sa is also actively involved in training residents, fellow doctors and other eye health care workers and has contributed significantly towards the development of eye care services in the community. Dr. Ranjit Kumar sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Prasadav sir. <clears throat> Dr. Ranjit, share the yes, screen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can see. Uh, is it visible, sir? Yeah, visible and audible. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Please go on. So, my topic is efficacy of SICS in community based eye camps. Geographical status of Nepal. Nepal is a culturally 
ethnically and geographically diverse country first on the southern slopes of Himalayan mountains. Because of its landlocked nature and rugged geography, the country is underdeveloped. The burden of problems typically for underserved population continues to be an issue for the Nepalese population. According to WHO 2012 data, 285 million people are visually impaired worldwide and cataract contributes to 33% of it and about 90% of the world visually impaired uh, live in developing countries. Despite what modern technology has done to advance the treatment of cataract, the greatest challenge in our field continues to be the large and increasing backlog of cataract blindness in developing countries. There are many millions of underprivileged people in developing nations with reversible blindness from mature cataract go untreated and Nepal is one of them. Nepal National Blindness Survey in 1981 showed that 0.84% of Nepalese population is bilaterally blind with cataract being the major cause of blindness. An estimated 8 million of the 30 million people in Nepal need eye care services every year. Only 1.5 million assesses, assist service in 2010. Vision 2020, the right to sight is about making services accessible to all population in a country by making efforts to reach the unreached population. Service coverage therefore remain poor and is a major challenge confronting Nepal's eye care. Cataract is responsible for 65% of blindness in Nepal. There are mainly two methods to perform it in a community-based cataract surgery, if we're talking about that. One is conducting eye camp and bringing the screen case to hospital and performing cataract surgeries. Another way is to do camps and cataract surgery in the community. Community-based cataract surgery is a big challenge for all developing countries like Nepal. The geographical makeup of our country remain another barrier. The objective is to tackle cataract related problem where the only method of treatment is surgery. SICS provides cost effective surgical care with good outcome and fewer complications. As Dr. Ganendra Sir mentioned, the area those are in very remote geographical regions conducting surgical camps will be effective. Usually we practice SICS. Uh, the uh, almost these are the methods a scleral frown incision uh, 6.5 to 7 mm long is made superiorly 1.5 to 2 mm away from the limbus the tunnel is constructed using crescent knife extending 1 to 1 1.5 mm into clear cornea the internal corneal incision is made into uh, using keratom the nucleus is pro prolapsed into the anterior chamber and is delivered using fish hook or bectis. The cortex is aspirated with a simco cannula and PCIOL is implanted in the capsular bag. Subconjunctival gentamicin and dexamethasone injection is given and the conjunctival flap is mobilized to cover the tunnel. Its outcome, it is found to be good number of participants attending eye camps. Nearly equal ratio of genders come to camps to get services. During camp, age-related cataract, pseudophakia, refractive errors, corneal opacities, chronic dacryocystitis, strabismus, dry eyes, and miscellaneous eye disease are seen. Regarding types of age-related cataract, the most common are nuclear sclerosis. During camp, the acceptance rate for cataract surgery is 10 to 15 percentage. The age range of operated uh, cases are usually 41 to 90 years. Among it, seven decade patients are most common. In many camps, it is seen that unilateral blind percentage is higher. In many camps, it is also seen the normal visual acuity is achieved by 60 to 85 percentage. Manual SICS is far less expensive to perform than FECO emulsification and is proved to be effective and faster surgical technique. The eye camp seems to be only the way to reduce the bulk of cataract blindness in remote, underserved population. Periodic organization of well-managed eye camps in rural area 
are needed to reach the unreached targets. The perfect solution for it will be permanent establishment of primary eye care centers with routinely cataract surgery schedule. These are my references. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Ranjit, for highlighting the small incision cataract surgery in community based camps. The next speaker is Dr. Nilut Porna Diori Das. She is currently working as an associate consultant in Strabismus and Pediatric Ophthalmology Department at Sri Sankaradev Netrala Guwahati, Assam. She is also involved in teaching and training of residents at Sri Sankaradev Netrala, and she is the teaching and training in charge there. Her topic of presentation is Dr. Sahu's 2 millimeter SICS. The floor Thank is you. yours, Dr. Nilot Parnadiyori Das. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, at the outset, I would like to congratulate the entire uh, Nepalese team for uh, coming into the ISMSS family. And with that, uh, I also would like to congratulate uh, the, uh, my previous speakers for their excellent presentation because they have made my uh, presentation a little easier. So I am going to um, screen and I'm sharing. <clears throat> Uh, I hope my uh, screen is visible to all of you. Yeah, your screen yeah. is visible. Just start your presentation. It's visible, ma'am. Yeah. Is it okay? Is it running on full screen? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Arti. So at the very outset, uh, uh, I would like to bring in two points here, uh, especially as we were discussing more on that we are doing more of community services, the bulk amount of uh, Dr. Uh, Amalda Sahu sir for coming over all the way to Assam to teach me this technique and also my mentor, Dr. Harsha sir, without whom I would not have been present here today. So as we have all seen the modifications in the incision parameters in the previous uh, presentations, how we have tried to uh, <clears throat> minimize the surgically induced astigmatism and as well as improve the refractive results of the surgery. So it gave us a and about how we can uh, further modulate it. So these are some of the instruments that uh, we have been using for this particular surgery. And I would like to draw your attention to the Vectis with a four millimeter hanging edge, which uh, actually gives you the uh, edge of uh, doing this surgery. So with a, this is a two millimeter incision that we have marked around 1.5 millimeter behind the uh, limbus. And I've just gone in a little bit into the sclera where I have, uh, after which I have actually uh, given the back cuts on either sides of the tunnel. Now, the importance of doing this uh, back cuts is that we need to create a tunnel in such a way that it uh, creates a compressible uh, floor so that we can uh, bring in the uh, nucleus fragments uh, from it. Here, uh, the inner lip incision, that is the corneal incision, will go to around six millimeter because I will be implanting a uh, 5.5 millimeter optic PMMA IOM. Now you can see that when you have fragmented it in the anterior chamber, you can also do, a, do the fragmentation in the uh, bag and uh, you can easily deliver the nucleus. Herein, when you have created a 2.5 millimeter back cuts on either side of the incision, you actually create a hypotenuse of around uh, 3.4 <coughs> millimeter of diagonally uh, across the tunnel. So what happens is that you can easily put in the 5.5 optic through that in a very uh, in a diagonal way. So this is uh, one of our first uh, early postoperative astigmatism in this uh, category of uh, surgery, and we have seen that the mean spherical equivalent of the autoref measured astigmatic error changed marginally from 0.5 uh, to uh, from 0.4 to 0.5. Now, uh, here I would like to bring in uh, to your notice that here we have written that the, it is translating to a mean change of astigmatism of 0.14 diaper cylinder when the axis was ignored. Now, the axis was ignored here because when we are inducing an astigmatism uh, through a scleral tunnel, if it is on axis, that is uh, your, uh, when I am doing it on a, <clears throat> the steeper meridian is a regular astigmatism, I'm not inducing and uh, uh, that is, I'm not inducing any uh, cylindrical power in the spectacles postoperatively. But when I am going in the opposite axis, so what happens is that I'm inducing a 0.75 or 0.5 milli, uh, diopters of astigmatism. So here you see, yeah, this is a comparison of two millimeter and six millimeter. And I'll show you my results of uh, uh, two millimeter versus the 
uh, FECO as well. So here you see it is around 50 to 55 degrees of uh, astigmatism at, at 0.35, which actually translated to 0.4 at 66 degrees uh, uh, post-operatively. And uh, when you are doing a six millimeter from 0.5, I have actually induced to 1.4. Now you see uh, here, the axis here is not marked because it is done in uh, uh, this uh, ultrasound method. So here I have induced it in the off axis, that is the uh, opposite axis. So I'm actually inducing a 0.75 here. The surgically induced difference of about half a diopter is achieved when a pairwise correlation was made. So it is interesting to note that when you have it in the regular uh, axis of around 0.76 diopters at 164 degrees, so what happens post-operatively with the two millimeter is that you are not inducing any astigmatism post-operatively. So you can see it is almost zero. <clears throat> Similarly, my previous speaker has said that we definitely do less amount of endothelial injury, and it has been proved by the CV and the hexagonality of these patients. So <clears throat> now it is with the two millimeter and the FACO. We have found out that the same amount of uh, surgical induced astigmatism is created when a pairwise correlation was made. And I have uh, not induced uh, any extra astigmatism, whether I'm doing it in a FACO or an MSICS. But the problem here lies with FACO is that when I'm doing a temporal, superior temporal incision, my astigmatism turns out to a plano. But when I am doing it on a superior nasal incision, if I am a, a person who is doing from the head end of the patient, then actually I'm inducing more of astigmatism. However, this is an advantage in terms of two millimeter MSICs because if you are a, a surgeon who is uh, on the <clears throat> doing the surgery on the superior aspect, that is the uh, uh, 12 o'clock position, you are actually not inducing any extra astigmatism to that patient. Therefore, when the cylindric, uh, when the axis was ignored, you are only inducing a, a this 0.4 cylinder for the patient point uh, post-operatively. So when we checked the wound integrity both for FACO as well as the two millimeter, you can see that the wound integrity is absolutely a good wound which, which has healed well. And <clears throat> this we have seen <clears throat> with the help of an ASOCT. You can also see it with the help of an UBM as well. But however, since this is a very uh, small incision through which you are going in to implant a PMM, a larger uh, IOL, so therefore it has a difficult learning curve. The most important being that uh, you may end up with corneal endothel, uh, endothel uh, this uh, edema postoperatively. Now, uh, the reason for this here is that I am breaking the nucleus in the AC with the VESCO cannula with continuous irrigation of the VESCO during the process. However, to avoid this, you can also use the can chopper to uh, bisect or to FECO fragment uh, your nucleus in the bag and then you can easily pop it out. We have also used uh, foldable IOLs in these patients, which are easier to implant with a two millimeter because then you are not uh, increasing your corneal uh, <clears throat> entry to six millimeter. You are actually within a maximum of three millimeter entry into the uh, anterior chamber. Now, uh, since we have been discussing about so many surgery, uh, uh, surgical procedures, what I'm going to show you here is that if you have not, uh, uh, I'll stop it here. If you have not uh, given your back cuts or the back incisions on either side of your tunnel, you actually tend to enlarge your incision. You are not uh, staying in the uh, within the two millimeter of the incision. Therefore, uh, I emphasized at the beginning that you have to put in your uh, back incisions uh, before you uh, enlarge your tunnel. Otherwise, what happens is that you are actually, uh, and if you have not given a back incisions, you are actually causing a bursting effect and you have actually uh, done a, a, a distortion of the wound architecture. So uh, here, this was uh, my fir uh, first beginning where I, I did not understand the morphology of the wound uh, architecture. And then I ended up uh, uh, like uh, doing a bursting. So you can see here, this is an NS2 grade, which I have taken out and it has actually created a bursting. So you see, I have taken two, three attempts to take it out uh, from the nucleus. So this is the wound ergonomics for uh, PMMA. That is your uh, entry to a six millimeter, your back incision should extend to 2.5. But if you're using a, uh, a foldable IOL, it can extend only to around 1.5 millimeter and in a corneal entry of only around 
uh, 2.8 millimeter is sufficient. However, the trapezoidal uh, incision does not work here because uh, in that case you are not uh, in the, uh, you are not creating a compressible tunnel and you are actually creating a pearl string effect. So therefore, this technique is an advanced uh, micro incision uh, technique where there is a refinement of the incision, limiting the size and uh, causing uh, estimating neutrality. Visco fragmentation can be done in the AC or you can even do it in the bag and it is safer for the corneal endothelium. You can implant a foldable IOL as well as a rigid PMMA IOL. However, the optic size has to be around 5.5 and uh, wound architecture is maintained throughout your procedure. It is got cost effective than FECO, has got less carbon footprint and absolutely reproducible. So these are some of our patients uh, who's, uh, who had gratifying surgical outcome for the patients and we have done over 120 surgical cases right now comparing both FECO and 2 mm MSICS with PMMA. And uh, I would like to um, end by quoting uh, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, who said that it is creativity seeing the same thing, but thinking differently. So 2 mm SICS is something like that, where you actually see, you are actually doing it in the same way, but refining your art or your talent of doing the surgical procedure in a different way. Thank you so much. Thank you, Doctor, for the excellent presentation. Now the floor is open for discussion. If you, anyone of you have any queries, if anybody wants to comment anything, uh, we can do that as well. Oh, Doctor Nilu Poma. Uh, and like, I have a question, like, how we do, how do you do the back in like back incision that you are giving it? So is it partial or full, like you're going to go into the anterior chamber too, yeah. or just the, uh, I am, I am, uh, giving a partial thickness, uh, scleral, uh, incision here. Uh, I'm putting it uh, across the, uh, main wound that is, uh, you create a two millimeter wound. And then mm -hmm. you give back cuts on either okay. side of the okay. main wound. Mm -hmm. So, this, and then you enlarge, make the pockets in that area. So, if you have okay. uh, seen the uh, mm -hmm. animation okay. that I have, you done, shape. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, you you create the pockets uh, uh, in the back cuts, not in the tunnel. Uh, I mean, ahead into the limbus. One comment from my side, like we are only centered on the patient outcomes and all this, yes. but above all in this world, present world, MSCIS uh, stands against FACO and FLAX, like it is the least carbon emitting procedure yeah. we have. Like as we go on from this ECC to SICS to FACO to FLAX, it is more, more, more and more carbon producing. The carbon footprint is maybe, as studies shows, the carbon footprint production of FECO is 13 times more than of SICS. There are a lot of plastics used, a lot of uh, disposables, but in SICS, everything is reusable. The notion for now is reduce, reuse. That is quite aptly applicable to SICS. And we should advocate this part also, I think, when advocating for MSICS. The outcomes, as already shared by all the speakers, is not inferior to the FACO and other advanced surgeries. <clears throat> Dr. Bhushuttam, very well point you have pointed out. One more advantage of SICS, whatever you have pointed out, definitely we should mention in literature in future also. But all these talks have shown that SACS is not is at par with the FACO. It is not less than. In many cases, it's better than FACO because if you have preoperative astigmatism, you cannot correct it by FACO. But preoperative astigmatism without toric can be corrected by FACO, by SACS, by giving incision on the steep axis. So it, Dr. Boramani has given name to not as a, as a SICS, but customized incision surgery now. It is customized incision small surgery. So this is the new name for the SICS surgery nowadays. So some way it is better than FACO in some cases. But above all, 
we always advocate we should know all the types of surgery peku sic ecg all types of surgery and we should use whatever is available to us in according to the patient because patient welfare is the first priority if you hard black brown catheter you are going to do peku that is more harmful to the patient when you do not have the more advanced machine more advanced training so developing country especially in india and apart from that this is really a boon for all of us and also the advanced country in you know, singapore usa they are also adopting this sics modalities dr nilu you are dr parikshit yes, dr bramani sir wants to comment something yeah i have few comments uh, first of all dr purushottam has brought very valid point i was going to tell that thing because uh, sics is uh, earth friendly eco friendly the carbon footprints are very less i don't remember exactly but doing one peco is equivalent to driving a car say it is 40 or 400 kilometers i don't know that, that has been found out in a study second thing uh, now see sics is always compared to peco but a standard sics is compared in many institutes where high volume surgery is done standard sics is that irrespective of the astigmatism always a superior incision always a prone incision either a prone or straight and always a 6 or 6.5 mm incision is taken and that's why sics then keeps carrying bad name secondly sics is a good sics is difficult to learn compared to peco in many institutes i have asked wherein they impart training for both sics as well as peco so which is picked up by student earlier they always say that peco is picked up earlier than sics so in the initial learning stage many times the corneas are damaged in sics and then sics starts getting a bad name uh, my take on this is that an average or a standard sics may be little inferior to peco as far as the astigmatism mm -hmm. and the uh, post op visual recovery is concerned but uh, if you learn advanced sics techniques as shown by dr nita dr nilparna today these are not very easy to learn but if you start doing advanced sics work then perhaps they are much superior than peco how can all the astigmatism can be solved only with a standard 2.8 mm and always temporal incision it is not the answer then the surgeon start pushing patient even for a 0.75 diopter of astigmatism surgeon surgeon starts pushing the patient for a toric lens and in spite of that many times we have seen that the cornea is not a so friendly tissue the results may not be as expected we have seen many patients operated by expert peco surgeon done with toric eye but still patients lands lands up with irregular astigmatism So if you start learning this customized incision, and you can then charge it, promote it as a premium surgery done with or without a premium lens. So SSS, especially the advanced SSS, is not for all surgeons, not only poor surgeons. It is for poor surgeons, rich surgeons. It is for all cataracts, maybe white cataract, black cataract, and all grades of cataracts. In fact, there is no color discrimination in SSS. It may be white cataract, black cataract, brown cataract. SSS is a good result. Uh, result. and many advanced surgeons who do advanced sics in india especially have seen now they are not touching the peco machine at all even i am not touching the peco machine at all i am touching it only when i want to do entry vitrectomy and i am charging more to the patient than all the peco surgeons surrounding me and even in india the highest cataract package is for sics with a monofocal eye well and the surgeon is charging almost double than that of a flak surgery and this pressure by the instrument company is also not there all surgeons cannot have a very high volume in private practice so that they can afford 100 iols per ml and there is no binding with the bundles by this machine and then you consume this much iols it becomes a tremendous financial pressure you keep earning keep earning and you keep paying to the machine company instead of that you charge more as a premium surgery many people they charge only as a premium iol but in sics especially you are doing this advance where you you promote it as a premium surgery and then put either a premium lens or a non premium lens but you can charge more to the patient if you are confident about the uh, your results so this is the major advantage of sics and surgeon can always have a peaceful sleep thank you uh, uh, karthik i just come want to add a point yes sir the uh, in 2005 uh, people were feeling shy of telling they are doing sics that is why this platform was made to give them that uh, they were doing about to 70% of the cataract uh, surgery but they were not telling that they are doing sics so that kind of inferiority complex was there which has now changed now one thing i want to say that i is sold for crores 
a small piece of piece of so you have to have that belief that is what uh, ismsa is doing instilling belief and pride in their art so i hope everybody anywhere doing sics must feel proud they are artists they can do feco but they must take pride in their things and should not be should not be, make it a cheap they should do when the people person is not deserving you give them free but when the somebody is affording charge your price that is that much i want to say this this platform is to instill the pride in sics thank you thank you sir meenu ma'am wants to comment something Yeah, actually, I would like to congratulate all the presenters, and I think uh, Dr. Sahu and Dr. Uh, Boromani. I think we learned so many things today that it's uh, SICS is a customized uh, this thing. I think it is always like even if you're doing FACO at the back of your backup is always your SICS. I think that was that is I always feel we should never keep SICS below FACO. It is in par with uh, FACO only. and uh, being a cataract and uh, cornea specialist i always feel uh, cataract is always a part of refractive surgery only it is a refractive surgery so i think that is what you told so nicely in your presentations and at this platform where everybody is here i would like to take an opportunity uh, we recently we launched our nepal cornea cataract and refractive surgery society so we are going to have our annual meeting in june second and third and i would like to invite the society uh, i told dr sutanshu we were talking whether we can have some wet lab or something and we also have our annual uh, noscon conference in biratnagar uh, where dr raksha is the director there so we are planning that somewhere in october so i think in both these conferences we would like to welcome you and uh, if you could uh, help us in doing some wet lab sessions and some uh, talks we would really like to welcome you to our conferences to offer these conferences thank you so much thank you thank, thank you. you so much ma'am thank you so much definitely uh, it is an honor to be there in nepal and then show what uh, we know and learn from what you know so boramani sir has also raised his hand sir over to you boramani yeah sir. i want to add a few more things ssas wound is a very secure wound because the tunnel is very secure it heals very fast and the wall mechanism also is very good as compared to a clear corneal incision so as far as the infection and endophthalmitis is concerned i think ssas wound is very much superior and right from day one it is covered with conjunctiva so it is a very safe incision and one more thing uh, i just want to ask a question in all conferences we keep hearing how to convert to ssas during a difficult preco always you hear a talk how to convert to ssas but so far i have never heard a talk how to convert to ssas uh, how to convert to feco in case of a difficult ssas i have never heard so this means that ssas is for all mm-hmm. dr yanandar dr yanandar is here he is doing lot of ssas in nepal yes, yes sir i am here yes. so anybody from the uh, nepal chapter nepal yeah. team would dr. like yanandar to thank from nepal yanandar is from nepal yeah dr nepal your comments is your feeling regarding ssas has changed after this this thing 3 mm incision 2 mm incision uh, i think we have to we have to learn that as well we are not uh, familiar with 3 mm incision uh, most in most of the case i am doing 6 mm incision but uh, sometimes if we expect the nucleus is very hard i will go for 7 to 8 mm incision i would really love to practice your this, this one but i mean sir's technique and everything our 2 to 3 mm definitely uh in coming days i guess we can do that that again is you just start with the four mm incision this is the usual incision we are using not okay. simultaneous yes okay. start four mm and give to vertical incisions on the four mm level and you can remove hardest nucleus because the niche in internal pocket becomes six mm so you start from tomorrow okay. not giving six mm it is outdated now mm-hmm. and that i promised dr minu when i was talking about the installation He has said in in Nepal, everybody consider SIC surgery very inferior surgery. Nobody will want to talk to you about it. How can I make a, a society there? Then I promise her. But you join us, we will change your concept of SIC. And I hope from tomorrow onwards, you will go for the four millimeter incision minimum. Then you can come to the two millimeter, three millimeter. Exactly. <clears throat> Doctor Prakshit. Oh. 
looks no, like uh, Parikshit sir was out to side somewhere. So, uh, any more comments? Any more questions? In the MSIS, yes, we had the experience of using this my loop snare, like the FACO fracture. And it was also quite easy to bring out the nucleus. Uh, yes, sir. We uh, you can also use the snare. You can use the chopper. You can use a, a, a flattened tipped visco cannula. Uh, you can use even the cystotome with a continuous irrigation of uh, visco. So there are different uh, methods of doing uh, a FECO, uh, fragmentation. Maybe in the bag or in the AC. So, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, good evening, everyone. I just want to say that uh, in my experience, whenever we were talking about uh, converting SICS to FICU, not exactly converting it, but whenever I used to get <clears throat> a big uh, nucleus and the somehow the tunnel becomes small or I have to make a small tunnel due to the scleral disease, some uh, kind of... Uh, no place or small one. Then we used to. I used to do fake chop there, fragment the nucleus, then take it out via the fish hook, the fragmented nucleus, then put the uh, IOL diagonally. So in that case, we can combine that fake with SICS and do it very uh, easily. Yeah, many people are using this combined method, isn't it? But only thing that in SICS. Uh... There is no need of putting this ultrasound energy in the eye because there are so many good fragmentation techniques. Mm -hmm. That's my take on it, isn't it? Because so many people train who are used to FECO machines, so actually then for dividing, we use it and we use that ultrasound energy. <clears throat> There's a pre-chopper also available which will divide. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So many things are there. But anyway, surgeon has to see his comfort level also. Correct. Yeah. yeah. All senior surgeons should have at least 10% of their case for research. So I think they should focus on future generation and pass on the routine surgery to younger people. Because particularly in Nepal, we have the high volume and there is a lot of scope for research. They can come out with some many innovations and other things. So we'll work on it together, Minu, ma'am, to uh, have the some things in research as well from Nepal. They yes. can form a research group. Yes, sir. And connect, so we'll connect with on. ours and uh, we'll assign certain projects and they can we can work on that. Because the world is looking to us for guidance. So having all experienced surgeons and not getting their talent to for the future will be a big loss. So that, that is where we are going to focus. Yeah. So I think with this, we have reached towards the end of our session. And if we don't have any more comments or questions, uh, <coughs> Deepak Misha, sir, are you there? So uh, I request Dr. Uh, Nilutpana to give the vote of thanks. Meanwhile, can I request uh, Mr. Anmol to play the video from Entod? And sure. one more request, I request everyone to please, please switch on their videos so that I can take a screenshot and then just give your best smile. Yeah, that will go to the website. So I think two people have gone. Yeah, so are, you, are we ready for the for the video? For yes. the photograph? Yeah. Yes. Oh, well, you want a smile, huh? <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yes. So, Nirdhmana, uh, please give a vote of thanks. Yeah. yeah. So, as we have come uh, to the end of this session, I would like to, on behalf of Sri, uh, on behalf of ISMS, I say sorry, I would like to thank uh, the entire team of uh, Nepal Ophthalmological Society for taking this huge step in joining us for more scientific, academic, as well as skill transfer uh, uh, co cooperation with them. 
I would like to congratulate once again the Nepal Society of Ophthalmo Ophthalmological Society headed by Dr. Uh, Professor Minu Chaudhuri, ma'am. And I would like to uh, congratulate all the office bearers who have come today at this hour uh, on the eve of Holi to uh, spend their time and be a part of ISMSICS. We look forward to our future collaboration. And with that, on behalf of the entire team of ISMSICS India, we welcome you all and uh, we wish you a ha very happy Holi and good night. Good night. So thank you, everyone. Thank you once again. Dr. RT, yes. Dr. Samenath is here in the panel. He is going to start the Poland chapter soon. So I will actually have this comments also. Dr. Samenath, ask He has left. Dr. Samenath, Dr. Darvindra Nath, sir, are you there? Abhi Chai, you are just following. He left. He just left. He just left. Yeah, sir, I'll connect yeah. with him for the Poland chapter soon. Yeah, because he was just wanting to see how we are going to installation. So we are, I have invited Krishna even for this installation ceremony so that he can see how to do installation done. Okay, sir, maybe I can share the link of the recorded session uh, so yeah, that he can. That, that and thank here. you so much, Sadanju, sir, for uh, making this happen once again. I just took it the same thanks to you for taking forward this message, taking forward with Dr. Minu and Dr. Ranji. Yes, I think, yeah, we would really like to thank Dr. Arti for being the very pushing factor and yeah, Ranjit yeah. who was coordinating in between. Thank you, Ranji, and thank you, Arti, so much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, thank Dr. Arti. Arti has become habitual now, so we are stopped thanking Arti. It's an integral today. part of uh, all the chapters, installations yeah. and, and uh, formations. Yeah. 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 They are more to be joined. They are Arti and Nita, Nita. They are all a dynamic. Yes. So we are working under your leadership, sir. <laughs> Rata Minu, thanks a lot. Once again. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank yes. you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Arthi. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.